Okie dokie, so I wanted to uh, go over um, sort of the primary components that I chose um, when building up my 1200 horsepower, horsepower Mustang. And this is really focused towards the street. Um, if you want to build a drag setup, you might be you might do something a little bit different. So this is just something that I chose to do. So uh, the primary, obviously the one of the biggest uh, important things is the uh, the engine. So um, I chose to kind of go away from the 4.6 liter. I wanted something with um, larger displacement and uh, to kind of um, a good building block for that. Um, I chose the Boss 5.0 block. Um, it's cast iron. It's not aluminum, um, so it is going to be about 75 pounds heavier. Um, but I chose to go go with that more or less um, for the larger displacement and the increased durability. So um, the total displacement is 5.2 liters. Um, I went with manly rods, billet I-beam uh, rods rather than H-beam just to give a little bit more um, safety factor. Uh, manly pistons, forged aluminum uh, with the MMR coating. Uh, this is a coating that's sort of a, it's a red coating um, that helps um, supposedly um, with high temperatures. Um, cleavite bearings, um, these are the main bearings that um, support the crankshaft. Uh, total seal rings, uh, you want to make sure that you go with the rings that will support high boost. Uh, your crankshaft, uh, Forge 4340 8-bolt crankshaft, um, pretty much a Plain Jane 4340 forged crankshaft. Uh, this is the 4.75 liter stroker. So if you have a 4.6 liter and you install this crankshaft, it's going to increase your displacement to 4.75 liters. Um, so when you combine that with a 5.0 black, it actually puts the displacement at 5.15 liters, and I just basically round it up. Uh, so your cams, I um, went with the Stage 3 Turbo Cams from MMR. Uh, states reported heads, uh, billet oil pump gears, and cam phaser lockouts. So what the lockouts will do is will prevent rotation of your camshaft. Um, it will essentially eliminate your, your cam phaser system. Uh, I just did that uh, more or less for robustness. Um, I don't think when you're running that's high a boost, um, your cam phaser system really isn't going to do much for you. Um, so I just decided to eliminate that. Okay, so force induction. Um, you're going to have to go with some kind of a force induction uh, kit. Uh, there's just so many options out there. Supercharged, turbocharged, single turbo, twin turbo, centrifugal, roots, twin screw. Uh, there's just so, so many options out there. Um, but because I already had a, super, a supercharger before, I decided to do something different and I had to go with a single turbo kit more or less because I really couldn't find a suitable twin turbo kit for my car. Um, so I went with the Hillian 3 valve single turbo kit and this is the race option so you eliminate your cats um, and I had, it's a custom version of the kit because um, I actually had the Downpipes um, rerouted above the steering rack because uh, my car is lowered and those pipes were actually hitting the ground. Um, so I went and had somebody reroute the pipes for me and now everything's good. Um, I went with the 76 75 millimeter precision turbo ceramic ball bearing uh, with a 0.96 AR. That's really designed for high flow. Um, you know, there's going to be a bit, a bit of a lag. Um, but it's actually not that bad. Uh, Turbo Smart 60 millimeter Big Bubba wastegate. Um, I had a 38 millimeter wastegate on there, and there was some turbo creep happening just because it's not. It wasn't able to exhaust the gases um, enough for the bigger turbo. Uh, Turbo Smart 38 millimeter bypass valve. Uh, this is a draw through turbo um, kit. So it's not a blow-off valve, it's actually a bypass valve since it reroutes the gases back into the intake. And what's really important, uh, one of my favorite features in this whole uh, turbo kit 
is the uh, race ready three inch exhaust cutout um, pretty much if you're running a single turbo kit um, your dual um, exhaust uh, headers or shorty headers or exhaust manifolds those will actually go into a single three inch pipe and that essentially turns your exhaust system into a single um, single pipe system so uh, to eliminate some of the uh, back pressure I decided to go with an exhaust cutout and it's really cool I like it so much um, essentially um, you're going to be limited to about 800 wheel wheel horsepower if you don't have this exhaust cutout and these are for the uh, three valve cars <clears throat> so with it engage you can easily get a thousand plus horsepower out of it so and plus it's really it sounds really nice too you can hear the uh, turbo spool up a lot more okay so for the uh, air intake um, I went with uh, Ford Racing um, air intake manifold this is the one with the shorter runners um, next um, with the Ford Racing twin 62 millimeter throttle body um, and if you notice, I hydro dipped, carbon fiber hydro dipped um, the air intake manifold. Transmission, uh, Tremec T56 Magnum XL, uh, it's a six speed. Um, it's rated at 700 foot pounds. Um, that's continuous operation. So basically you're stomping on it continuously and it's rated for that, that higher horsepower. So. Transient response, uh, shorter duration loads, it's going to be much more than that. Um, you know, it was it was supporting over a thousand wheelbar horsepower pretty easily. So, uh, so far so good for that. Uh, so McLeod RXT 1200 clutch, um, this will support up to um, tw over 1200 foot pounds. Um, it's essentially the same exact clutch as the RXT 1000. Just the pressure plate is, um, the, the spring is a little bit stiffer, so it's going to provide a little bit more force. Um, McLeod aluminum steel um, insert flywheel. Essentially what this is, is an aluminum flywheel uh, with steel inserts um, where the contact surface is between the clutch disc and the aluminum, and I'm sorry, and the flywheel. So when these get worn out, you can just screw them off and um, replace them. Uh, the when you go with the T56, you're gonna have to go with a, um, a different drive shaft, and I with I went with drive shaft shop. Um, it's a shorter drive shaft. Um, it's rated for 850 wheel horsepower, uh, which means it'll handle uh, more than that. So for the suspension, um, quite a few mods. Um, kind of important. You want to kind of tie everything together, uh, make sure things um, are a little stiffer than stock. Um, so the <clears throat> the major thing I installed is Eibach Pro Suspension Kit. Um, this essentially comes with uh, new front struts, new front springs, uh, rear springs, um, new rear dampers. Um, it lowers the car um, in front and the back. Um, also, uh, it comes with a couple uh, new um, sway uh, sway bars. Um, one in the front, one in the rear. Uh, also, uh, because I had the engine out, I decided to go with a BMR tubular K member just to lighten things up in the front. Um, BMR front adjustable lower control arms. Um, these are the A arms. BMR adjustable rear upper control arm. Um, this is what you can use to um, help adjust the pinion angle. And then uh, BMR rear heavy duty upper control arm mount. Um, this is actually a lot more heavier duty than the stock upper control arm mount. Um, this provides a little more stiffness uh, during acceleration. Uh, BMR adjustable rear lower control arms. Uh, I got there's a spherical uh, bushing on one end and a polyurethane bushing on the other. Uh, BMR rear lower control arm relocation bracks brackets. Um, this allows you to obtain the proper angle. Of the lower control arm, uh, JNM adjustable panhard bar. This essentially lets you dial in um, the horizontal uh, positioning of the rear differential. 
fuel system, um, I went ahead and went with the Div Division X uh, return style fuel system. Um, it's comprised of twin Wellboro 465 liter per hour um, fuel pumps. Um, went ahead and went with the injector Dynamics 1050X fuel injectors. These are good enough um, for over a thousand wheel horsepower on E85. I was a little worried about that. I thought I might have to upgrade to something larger but I didn't have to. Um, and of course your fuel, that's important. Um, for Dino Day, I went with Ignite E85. Um, this is really nice. I mean, it's uh, very, you can't really smell the exhaust at all when you're running this. Um, it smells, smells kind of sweet um, and it's just pretty nice. Uh, E85 pump gas, it's actually where I live, it's not E85, it's actually E70. And you can smell a little bit more of the exhaust. Cooling, I um, went with the Mishimoto Performance Radiator. Um, that's the same one that I, you can get from American Muscle. I uh, went with the Reich 170F thermostat. Um, initially, I went with the Mishimoto 160F thermostat, and it actually failed. So I had to replace it. Um, so my recommendation is not to get the Mishimoto um, thermostat. I, I would suggest the Reich. It's, it's very, it's very, it works very well. Um, Edelbrock Performance Water Pump and for Racing Performance Fan. I think that fan's the same one that's in the GT500s. Uh, supporting Electronics, um, Turbo Smart E-Boost 2 Boost Controller. Uh, this is so nice, let me tell you. I mean, you can, there's six boost settings. I can go from 450 wheel horsepower up to 1,000 wheel horsepower at the flick of a button. I mean, that's just so cool. And you can't do that with a supercharger kit. I mean, you just can't. Uh, that's one of my favorite features of a turbo kit is the boost controller. And I think just because of that alone, I wouldn't go back to a supercharger. Uh, turbo Smart 4 point solenoid. Initially, I was using this, the uh, one that came with the eBoost 2. Um, but I switched to a 4 port. And that just gives me better control and a larger... Um, um, interval of boost, so I can go from you know 5 psi to 25 uh, pretty easily. Um, I got the SETX4 tuner. I actually data log all the time, and because I data log, looking at the engine coolant temperature, that was uh, that allowed me to actually spot the problem with the um, thermostat. I wasn't monitoring things with the SETX4 tuner. I would have never spotted the problem with the thermostat, so. Uh, that definitely helps. Uh, just some gauges, Autometer Nexus boost fuel pressure and air fuel gauges. Uh, the Nexus is nice, but they don't make it anymore, so I'm pretty much hosed if it goes if something goes wrong with it. Um, NF8 Motorsports ethanol content, fuel temp pressure, and oil temp pressure gauges. The ethanol content is uh, pretty cool. So when you're filling up your car and you're putting E85 in it, it's probably not going to be 85, so your ethanol content gauge will tell you exactly what it is. So at least you'll know sort of um, if your tune can support that level of ethanol or not. And your fuel temp pressure, these are actually dual sensors, so the gauge reads both temperature and pressure for the fuel and oil. And I, I look at that all the time, so it's really nice. Uh, so traction, obviously, if you're going with uh, high horsepower, um, the 235 millimeter wheels just aren't going to cut it. I'm sorry, the 235 millimeter tires aren't going to cut it. Um, so I had went with the um, a True Fiber S 197Y body kit um, that allowed me to put on uh, wider tires, and I went with the Ford Star 19 by 12 inch um, with a six millimeter offset wheel. Um, with Kumo Extra ACR 19 by 355 millimeter wide tires in the rear. These are the same tires as the Dodge Viper ACR, the new the new ACR. Uh, on the front, I decided to go with the Continental Extreme Contact 19 by 305 millimeter tires, millimeter wide tires in the front, um, and everything is working pretty nicely. Um, I'm pretty happy with the Kumos. They grip pretty much. Um, Depending on the what road you're going on, I've had them grip all the way up to 800 wheel roll horsepower in second gear, so that's saying a lot. Um, so I'm very very happy with these. Uh, so the 
max car width um, because of the wide body kit um, from edge tire edge to tire edge in the back is 79 inches um, just as a comparison um, Motor Trend did a best driver's car recently um, this is October of 2018 and they measured the ZR1 to be 77.4 inches and that was the widest car that they had in the competition and mine is much wider than that so that kind of shows you how wide um, my car is okay so for crankcase ventilation um, when you build an engine that has larger ring in gaps um, like I did and you have it's under boost uh, you probably want to introduce better crankcase crankcase ventilation um, so what I'm doing is I'm venting um, the crankcase uh, through both valve covers so I'm running a welded dash 12 and fittings to each valve cover. I actually have aluminum valve cover, so this makes this a little bit easier. Um, and then I'm running dash 8, 12 and lines from each valve cover into a large breather tank. And the uh, Fat House Fab oil breather tank is one that I went with. And that's, that's actually pretty nice. Um, and But that actually goes um, where the stock battery is. So... Um, I installed a UPR battery re relocation kit. It might seem strange to you, my friend, that some things are always heaven sent the more you want the harder it gets the more you let go the more you get it's a crazy beautiful life it's a crazy beautiful life some things make sense and you don't know why it's a crazy Changing ain't what you think you know Even if you're standing still You're floating in space So grab a hold of your heart And you'll find your place In this crazy beautiful life In this crazy beautiful life Some things make sense And you don't know why It's a crazy Some things make sense and you don't know why it's a crazy 